Hi everyone, this is James Parsons Moore from InTouch CAD Management and we've got a little tip and trick here about brick dimensions. Now I've used this technique for quite a few years, even before I started doing Revit and I was using things like Architectural Desktop and even just AutoCAD. Um, I use this. Now I know it's um, not uncommon for you to sit there with your little A4 sheet with all your brick dimensions on, with your plus and minuses for mortar joints, etc. But I've been that years and years ago and I've used this technique since. I find it quite easy to use and uh, hopefully you will too. Um, there will still always be a place for having a little A4 sheet because it's good to check these things. Okay, But just for drawing um, openings into your building, okay, I find this nice and useful. Now as you can see in front of us, we've just got a simple plan on here. Um, it's a very similar sort of plan to the kind of demonstration that I did for you in a previous um, video. So if I just look in here, what I've done in this one though, I've actually put in my windows at brick dimensions. I've created them all so that sort of size. Um, I've got those already set up in a template that I use anyway. Um, I've also put a quick dimension on here so you can see that these openings are brick dimensions across here and there's a, an overall dimension as well. Now what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to very quickly go to my annotate tab okay, and I'm going to grab a detail component of a brick in plan. I'm just going to place it around here. It doesn't matter where for now. I'm going to highlight that brick in plan and I'm going to copy it down by 112.5. Okay, that's a, just obviously a brick and a mortar joint in plan. And then I'm just going to move it across in that direction, 112.5, which is obviously half the brick. Now, excuse me. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to simply highlight it. I'm going to use my array tool. Okay, I'm going to make sure it's not grouped and associated. I'm going to tell it that I want, say, 75 in total and move to second distance. Okay, I'm going to pick a point anywhere. I'm going to do it at 215, sorry, 225 to include my mortar joint. There we go. It's basically a horizontal brick rod. We've used these for years. Everybody seems to use them for doing their sections and putting a brick rod next to it so they can see the amount of courses that is going to be um, for your opening heights, etc. But nobody seems to do it in plan, which is where I first got this idea from. So once I've done that, I'm just going to highlight all of them. I'm going to come up to my ribbon up here where it says create group. I'm just going to simply create group. I'll give it a second. There we go. We're going to call it brick rod horizontal Ooh, horizontal oh made a little boo-boo there there we go horizontal there we go I'm not gonna worry about opening it in group editor I'm just gonna okay that what I'm now gonna do as well I'm just gonna grab my little UCS just here I'm just gonna drag it over and there we go just drop it on that point just there what that means is that will be the insertion point from uh, this group every time I bring it into my project just to show you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna delete that one and then come over to my project browser over here and where it says groups just plus that out detail groups there we go brick rod horizontal and as you can see if I just drag that onto my project it will actually be placing it from that point can you see that okay now you may already see where I'm going with this quite simply all I need to do now is use my align tool so I'm just going to select anything to bring up my modify tools go to align and I just need to align my door to the block brickwork as simple as that. Obviously you need to make sure you're using the right side of the mortar joint obviously because that window there is a brick dimension it just simply fit in there. Okay. Um, in this case my overall uh, dimension of my building if I want to go bigger I can click to that one if I just want to um, tweak it up to the smaller one it doesn't really matter in what I'm doing here but obviously you'll have different constraints on your projects depending on what you want to do if you've got minimum opening sizes so minimum size of your rooms inside you may want to go bigger but I'm just going to click on that one and move my overall wall in like that okay what I'm then going to do is just select it use my mirror draw axis from this corner at a 45 degree angle down there I'm then going to simply just use my line tool again to align that wall to there. Fantastic. And then I'm just going to highlight that, mirror it across my building like so. And again, I can simply just align these openings wherever I want to, all down my building. Okay. 
and there you go. We can hide them, we can turn them off, we can we can delete them, we can do whatever we want to do afterwards. Okay. What I sometimes do is highlight them, okay, and override the category graphics and make them a half tone, and uh, also maybe just make them like semi-transparent to so just to kind of fade them down to the background, so we can continue working over them if we want a little bit later on. Okay, well, thank you very much for that. Um, I hope that helps you um, in the future setting out your building to brick dimensions. It's something I'm a little bit fussy about, something I'm about as an architectural technician by trade. Um, it's always something that I, I try and make sure that I do, even at an early stage. It can help a project immensely if at an early stage you set it out to brick dimensions because it means there's less work later on. I know you have different constraints early on in a project to what we have later on in the project when we're doing the construction drawings, but the more you can do up front, just the little things that take a couple of minutes it can make everything flow and not a lot easier. Okay, well, thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again soon.